Here's an example of using the geomorphology watershed tools with an ArcGIS. The sample data includes an MXD that has a few DEMs and some pore points to facilitate working with the tools. The DEM in the north is of the Hickory Nut Gorge and in the south of the Green River Gorge, both gorges along the Blue Ridge Escarpment in western North Carolina. The blue dots represent pore points that I've defined but of course the ultimate objective is for the user to define their own poor points. For the purpose of the example today, we'll focus on the Green River Gorge and in particular on Little Cove Creek. In the right, on the right hand side you can see I've added the Geomorphology Watershed Tools toolbox to my ARC toolbox and it has the three script tools. We'll go ahead and open the first one, DEM for Hydrology, and you'll notice it defaults to the Green River Gorge DEM. When I hit OK, it'll start to execute the tool, and you can get some status updates from this window. The first part is that we've created the following folder to house our conditional DEMs. As it goes through here, it'll give an update when it fills the DEM, uh, calculates the flow direction, and then the flow accumulation. And I'll pause the video now because it takes a moment. All right, the tool completed in just over two minutes, and as these key steps here were completed, you got a flash across the screen with an update. Automatically, these raster data sets are added to the map document. So I'll go ahead and zoom in on the Green River Gorge area. What's shown on top is the flow accumulation and the pore points maybe seem a little bit more understandable at this point. Little Cove Creek is this stream here. So we'll go ahead and open the watershed extractor. Uh, this tool at defaults, again, we, we default to the Green River Gorge sample data set. Uh, the snap distance and the, and the minimum flow area of these defaults are, are used, and we'll go ahead and export to a KML. So we've, we're running several tools within here, but we've only got these five uh, inputs. So we'll go ahead and run that. And with every watershed, remember, we're going to loop through all four pore points because these are all in the input directory. So as we go through here, you'll get this message, starting Cove Creek Watershed. We're creating this output folder that's specific to Cove Creek Watershed. And then we're going to um, uh, calculate these results, and they'll, they'll get added to the map. So I'm going to pause the video now, and when we come back, we'll, we'll have this script complete. All right, that tool completed in just under four minutes. And throughout the process, it gave the user some starting and finishing messages for the various watersheds and then messages along the way to indicate progress. So I'll close that and I'll zoom out a little bit. And now you can see that we've created the watersheds and the stream networks at each of these four pore points. So I'll go ahead and open up the trunk profiler tool and I'm going to click append flow area. I don't have that as a default. Um, so I'm going to click that and take the rest of the defaults. Green River Gorge, we're going to export to KML, and we're going to also add the elevation. And the final tool completed in just under two minutes. And if you look closely here, you can see that it added the trunk profile that we specified into the map document. But the key here is not necessarily what happens in the map document, uh, but it's what, what happens in your working directory. So we're working under GWT Samples Green River Gorge. If you remember, we added that condition DEM folder. We've also appended the data in a CSV. So this is the CSV of Little Cove Creek with elevation and accumulation data added. The DEM was from the beginning. JPEG is where we have some sanity check plots. For example, a distance versus elevation plot that was done with matplotlib. The KMZ is where for all of our watersheds, we include these KMZ files that we can open for, for easy viewing. The pore points is original, trunk channels, that's from the original data set, and watersheds. This is where we create a folder for each watershed that's been calculated, and within there is all kinds of information that's used in the map document. So that's a quick overview of GWT. In the future, I hope to automate the extraction of this trunk channel which is a whole nother process. Right now it's manually done uh, by the user for both implementing these tools, but also doing this the other, uh, other way with just standard ArcGIS tool sets. And here's some of the results in Google Earth. Uh, again, I, I just think this is a very effective way to illustrate a watershed. These results here, again, are for Little Cove Creek, so we can start to uh, zoom in and, and pan around and, and really get a good idea of where these mountain slopes are draining to. 
Uh, it's also a good sanity check to make sure the processing all worked correctly and you didn't have any errors when you defined your pore point. So I think this is about the culmination here of the GWT tool set, and I hope uh, you guys can enjoy it and maybe get some use out of it, use it in your research, and save some time. Thanks.